Today we're adding two wilds Alderaan standard to try to go infinite in every possible way with Agatha Soul Cauldron. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition, and our first Wilds of Alderaan edition of Against the Odds. So this week we are heading to our new standard format, to try to go infinite in just about every possible way with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. So let's talk about this ridiculous combo deck, jump into some games and see just how infinite we can go. So we start with Agatha Soul Cauldron, the card that makes all of these ridiculous shenanigans possible, and maybe my favorite card from Wilds of Eldrine. So two mana legendary artifact, it fixes our mana for our creature's activated abilities. It can tap to exile a card from a graveyard, and if it's a creature, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control. Most importantly, creatures we control with plus one plus one counters on them have all the activated abilities of all creatures exiled with Agatha Soul Cauldron, and that last ability is the one that lets our deck do some ridiculous things. So our deck's a little bit convoluted. Let's walk through what it's actually trying to do. So our main combo is infinite mana. To make infinite mana with Agatha Soul Cauldron, we need a creature that taps for a bunch of mana, like Cami of Whispered Hopes taps to make mana equal to its power. Death Bloom Merchalist taps to make mana equal to the number of creatures in our graveyard. You'll see our deck is pretty good at stocking the graveyard because we need creatures with abilities in the graveyard for Agatha Soul Cauldron. So a lot of times Death Bloom's tapping for like five or six mana. So these creatures, we can either get one of them on the battlefield or get them in the graveyard and use Soul Cauldron to exile it and give another creature its ability. But most commonly, we're gonna like play Cami of Whispered Hopes. That's like our key combo piece. Step number two is exile a creature with an untap ability with Agatha Soul Cauldron. Like Sleep Curse Fairy's the best. It's just two mana to untap it or Depth Charge Colossus can also work sometimes. That's kind of our backup plan. So the idea is if we can get like Cami of Whispered Hopes on the battlefield and then exile a Sleep Curse Fairy to Agatha Soul Cauldron, we're gonna put a counter on Cami but it's actually two counters because of Cami's ability. So now we have a Cami that taps for three mana and untaps for two mana. And since Agatha Soul Cauldron also fixes our mana for activated abilities, we now have infinite mana of every color. And that's the ability that will hopefully lead to us winning the game. So step one, make infinite mana. Once we have infinite mana, there's a bunch of ways we can win the game. We can use Triskaidekafile, file, maybe exiling that to Agatha Soul Cauldron or just playing it to draw our entire deck. Uh, if we want to, we can draw to 13 cards Try to win on our upkeep. The easiest combo kill is just Realm Scorcher. Hellkite has an activated ability of two mana to deal one damage to any target. So again, we can either just like tutor up Realm Scorcher Hellkite, make infinite mana, cast it, ping our opponent to death, or we can get it in the graveyard, exile it to a soul cauldron, and give another creature its ability. And then Fauna Shaman is actually like kind of a combo piece in our best support card. Uh, so we can just tap to discard a creature card to tutor up a creature card. So this can find our Triskaidekha file, Realm Scorcher Hellkite, Cami, Sleep Curse Fairy. It can also get any of those creatures in the graveyard for Soul Cauldron. Plus, once we go infinite, remember we can untap Kami an infinite number of times. So we make infinite mana. We can also just like tutor all the creatures into our deck, into our graveyard for Soul Cauldron purposes. So that's the main plan for winning the game. Our backup plan and also support plan is just filling our graveyard super quickly. So we have like Urborg, Lurgoyf, Old Stick Fingers, Cruel Somnophage, Shigiki, Old Rusting. These are all just creatures that dump a bunch of cards into our graveyard. So most often we're using them to like get pieces or combo pieces into the graveyard so then we can combo kill but it is possible we could just like play a bunch of goifs and stick fingers and win by beating down the last piece of the puzzle is colossal sky turtle and this card is actually really important to the deck we're just talking about how we're really good at filling our graveyard so filling our graveyard with creatures is great because we can steal their abilities with agatha soul cauldron the problem is we really need to find agatha soul cauldron without agatha soul cauldron we can't do any of our combo shenanigans so the idea of Colossal Sky Turtle is this is a creature we can tutor up with our Fauna Shaman. If we mill an Aegis of the Soul Cauldron, we can channel it to just put Soul Cauldron back in our hand and then combo off the next turn and win the game. Otherwise, we got go for the throat for some removal, mana base, bunch of dual lands, pretty typical standard stuff. And that is infinite Agatha Soul Cauldron, infinite mana, infinite damage, infinite card draw, maybe some Triskaidekaphile wins. And that's our Against the Odds deck for today. So let's jump into some games and see just how many different ways we can go infinite. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up. Need some magic cards? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. 
against the odds time. We are trying to go super duper in, oh my God, this hand. Sleep Curse Fury, Kami, Fauna Shaman, Soul Cauldron. That is literally the whole combo in our starting hand. That is, <laughs> can I ask for more than that? We're trying to go infinite in literally every possible way in New Standard with Agatha Soul Cauldron. Oh, this hand, this might, oh no. Are we up against Amir? Ah, oh, legend. Boo. Probably playing fairies. Literally everyone is playing fairies. Well, let's get down the Fauna Shaman. I feel like Fauna Shaman is one of the best in, okay, Fairy Mastermind, sure. One of the best and most important cards for this deck. It does everything we want. It fills our graveyard, it finds our combo pieces. Well, let's see how much removal. Ooh, all right, Fairy Thought Seize, sure. Let's see how much interaction and removal our opponent has. That's a real question. We could all just run out the Cami. It would be nice. Like the easiest way to combo is have Cami on the battlefield. Like technically we're not, we're like two turns away from going infinite, right? If we play Cami and it lives, the next turn we can discard Sleep Cursed Fairy and play the Cauldron. All right, opponent takes the Cauldron, sure. Well, we have a backup. That must mean our opponent has another way of interacting with Cauldron. All right, down to 18. Wow, keep drawing the Cauldrons. Well, play the land. How do we want to do this? I'm just worried about how much interaction fairies have. Like, if we could just run out our stuff and not get interacted with, we just win next turn. But maybe we should play it slower. Yeah, let's let's play Triska deck of file. If that dies, we don't really care because we can steal its ability with Soul Cauldron. Go for the throat. Well, I guess we got to do it now then. So Petch the Sleep Curse Fairy. I'm just really worried about interaction. Like, Fairy's plays a lot. There's a Demir deck. They got a lot of removal. Yeah, let's just grab another, another Cami. So we lose a Fauna Shaman. Although, again, Agatha Soul Cauldron can turn other things into Fauna Shamans. Triska Decafile's not going to do much until we win. Oh my god, all right. Halo Forger for even more Fairy Thought Seizing. Yup. Well, good thing we are very good at drawing against the Soul Cauldrons. <laughs> Our opponent keeps thought seizing them, but we keep drawing more of them. Uh, this might mean we need to play Cauldron next turn, though. If they thought seize the third one, then we're very sad. Oh, that gets in, hits us down to 16. <sighs> play the land. We're gonna take this safe but slow route. The good news is, I don't think our opponent's deck should be able to interact with the Soul Cauldron now that it's on the battlefield. We can also use Soul Cauldron to make Triskaidekaphile into a Fauna Shaman if we want to. I think Soul Cauldron might actually be busted. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how we, if we can actually manage to combo off with this deck, but I think Soul Cauldron itself is really good. Pona hits us down to five. So we're down to 11, so we have two turns. Maybe three. Well, let's exile a Fauna Shaman. Turn Triskaidekaphile into a Fauna Shaman. I guess we could try to combo off with the Triskaidekaphile, theoretically. <laughs> if we can get all the abilities on the Triskaidekaphile. <laughs> Ooh, okay. That's actually fine. That's a removal spell out of hand. Well, let's uh, play the Kami Whammy. Well, it's only got one card in hand. Have we actually, they've had a ton of interaction too. Wait, maybe this deck actually can work. This seems like the nightmare. Like our opponent has so much interaction and we're still pretty close to comboing here. What is that last card? Ponet, gonna activate the fairy. Ugh. All right, Ponet's gonna refuel a bit. We draw Shigiki. Opponent draws two. I mean, in theory, we win the game next turn if our opponent doesn't have interaction. Uh, but we next out the Sleep Curse Fae, two counters on the Kami, infinite mana. Are we going to pull this off on our very first attempt? What are the chances that we go infinite on our first attempt? Against fairies, no less, but like, we got Thossies, what, three times? Two times? Removal spells. Opponent's really in the tank here. Well, I mean, we got to do something because we are about to die. Oh, come on, no removal. Ego Drain. Another Thossies, but we don't really care as long as our opponent doesn't have removal. Well, I mean, we got to go for it. So end of turn, exile the sleep cursed fairy. So now we have a Kami that taps for three and untaps for two, which is infinite mana. It's also a ooh, Colossus Sky Turtle. It is also a uh, Fauna Shaman, which is relevant here because it means it can tutor up our finisher. Let's, is there any way to play around interaction? That's the question. All right, let's play this Kami. Let's see what our opponent does. Let's activate the Soul Cauldron. 
targeting Triskaidekaphile. This would also give us infinite card draw. Infinite mana, infinite card draw, infinite fauna shamans. So we can tutor our entire, <laughs> draw our entire deck or tutor all the creatures into the graveyard. <laughs> Egg of the Soul Cauldron is ridiculous. All right, opponent, if you got removal, I guess. Like, we still win, though, right? Even if they have a removal spell here, they need removal plus counter. Because if they go to kill the Kami, we can just make infinite mana in response. Are we actually doing... Is this going to work? <laughs> Three minutes in to our first game, opponent, Etwara. Well, that's actually fine. So now we just go infinite in response. So... Also worth mentioning, Egg of the Soul Cauldron fixes our mana for ability, so we make infinite mana of every color. So what we do here, oh, this is gonna take a minute. So what we do is, we need to make like 30-ish mana. Opponent's tapped out now, so we don't have to worry about a counter. So we make like 30-ish mana. After you make 30-ish mana, we use, <laughs> still convoluted. So we use the Kami's ability, as a Fauna Shaman to tutor up Realm Scorcher Hellkite. And then we can play the Realm Scorcher Hellkite and ping you. Oh, I guess that's even, that's oh, two mana to ping, isn't it? Oh God. Okay, so we need like 50 mana. We need a lot of mana. I mean, this is deterministically a win though. So make some mana, make some mana. I guess it's deterministically a win as long as we don't time out, which is a bit of a concern. It would have been nice if this last <laughs> trigger resolved. Yeah, let's, we're going to get the Realm Scorcher Helka and just show our opponent and maybe they'll see, oh, this is the win con. Yeah, grab Realm Scorcher, go back to untapping. So now we just got to make enough mana that we can win with Realm Scorcher, which is a big number. Can I say good game? Not mockingly, just so our opponent knows, like, if you want to scoop, it's okay. Because you're not supposed to scoop during early access. And I feel bad making our opponent sit through this. So if you want to scoop, Legend, I'm not going to be. Yeah, all right. Well, first attempt, infinite in standard. Maybe this deck is better than I thought. I thought this might be an against odds where we lose, like, 50 matches to win once. But first shot, combo, infinite card draw, infinite mana, infinite damage, infinite creature tutoring. It's a lot of infinites. That's a lot of infinites. Wild Sand also is kind of perfect. <laughs> Opponent, ooh, Spiteful Hex Mage. Getting aggro, eh? Well, we'll see if we're fast enough. But we have the Sleep Curse Fairy, we got the Cauldron, we got the Kami, we got the Fauna Shaman. So we do have everything we need. Do we, oh, Razor Lash. Okay, this is an aggro, aggro, aggro start. Well, uh, I guess we play Fauna Shaman. And they're mono black, so they probably got removal. Fast Clock plus removal might be a problem. Opponent gets in, hits us, we will take it. Plays a land and ooh, God braids. Ooh, braids with rolls is kind of sneaky good. All right, draws a card. I do not have any faith that we can combo off in the near future. We probably got to kill this braids. I think we pass kill the braids, discard the sleep curse fey. Oh, and it goes attacking. We might also block with Fauna Shaman here. We can get its ability with Soul Cauldron anyway. Yeah, let's block. We're just taking so much damage. Uh, discard Sleep Curse Fae. I'm not sure what we're tutoring up here. Uh, maybe Sky Turtle? That's kind of removal. We could just try to get a big creature. Yeah, maybe, maybe we go Goif. Goif just like, if our opponent doesn't have removal, Goif can hold off these Razor Lash Transmogrants. Like, that's kind of the, po uh, the problem is this thing just keeps coming back. So we need a creature big enough to block it. All right, well, trade and trade. We drop to 11. Found it. Mishra's Foundry. Oh, God. Oh, oh, yeah, this is bad. This is real bad. Yeah, opponent just had a very fast clock this game. What is our best bet? We can't win next turn no matter what. Well, I guess unless we just really luckily top decked. I just don't know what the odds are of our Goyf living. Black usually has a lot of removal. If they kill our Goyf, we're super dead. But if Goyf sticks, it stops the attacks, right? At least for a minute. Yeah, let's, let's just double kick Goyf. Hopefully make a big blocker. If our opponents got removal, then we weren't going to be able to combo anyway. So I guess it, oh, we'll, just, well, I guess go for the throw. It's not very good against turn Margaret. Do you have it? Go for the throw. 10 down to eight. Yeah, we're super dead now. A bonus hits us down to four and plays another foundry. Well, aggro, aggro uh, on the play. Back by removal seems, uh, seems tricky. Let's run out Shigiki. I mean, wait, are we just actually dead on board, though? If they fire up the foundries, yeah, I guess we are just dead on board. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, that, that felt like a tricky matchup. Fast clocking a lot of removal.
against the odds time. We are trying to go super duper infinite in standard with uh, some Agatha Soul Cauldron infinite pretty much everything combo. That sounds fine. Actually, it's very good now that we drew the cami. Now we have every, <laughs> now we have everything. Do we want to play the fairy? Maybe we play the fairy. It's probably going to die anyway, right? Plus we have the Fauna Shaman, so we can tutor up another one if we need to. We have all the Fauna Shamans. Uh, yeah, let's keep running out lands. Play a Fauna Shaman. I mean, we're not that far away from going infinite, really. Wedding announcement, sure. And a token. Well, there's another Sleep Curse Fae. So let's play the land. Let's just run out the Cami. This potentially lets us win next turn? Hit our opponent down to 18. Hmm. Okay, three blind mice, that's not interaction. Wait, are we just are we just going infinite? Is this a turn four kill? We can activate Fauna Shaman. And like our if our opponent doesn't have anything, we just win here, right? Wait, is this deck actually busted? <laughs> okay, so we discard the Sleep Curse Fae, get the Realm Scorcher Hellkite, play the Soul Cauldron, counters on the Kami, infinite mana, infinite Hellkite damage, GG. I think this works, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, let's let's get the Realm Scorcher. Our opponent could have cut down, I guess. It doesn't feel like they have anything. All right, Exile the Sleep Curse Fae. Kami now makes three mana, untaps for two, and uh, here we go, tapping a turn four kill. Turn, turn four kill. <laughs> this is actually very fast. Wow. Okay, well, I mean, let's do the thing. We'll see how long our opponent sits through it. This is one of those cases where I'm hoping our opponent scoops. Oh, thank goodness. Thank you about it. Well, yeah, there's just so many clicks to actually win with Realm Scorcher, but uh, that was a no that was the fastest combo kill that we've had so far. Maybe this deck is actually not bad. Two tap lands, no blue mana, no cauldron. I think we actually mulligan. Yeah, I guess this is better. Yeah, maybe we put turtle to the bottom. I think that's fine. Old Rustine actually seems decent here. Just coming down, like generating value, filling the graveyard. One of the cool tricks of this deck is, so Sky Turtle lets us mill over Soul Cauldron, and then we tutor up Turtle with Fauna Shaman to get back the Soul Cauldron. So that's one of the, ooh, ooh, Virtual Persistence. That's a card that scares me. Ooh, we might be on, we might be on the backup plan. Wait, what, it is Goif good in 2023? <laughs> we mill the Sleep Curse Fairy, that's actually pretty good. Uh, I mean, we play a big goif. I don't know how likely we are to win by beating down with random creature. Oh, it's fairies again. Everyone's playing fairies. All right, mill, draw a sleep curse fairy. Well, we're just gonna double kick this goif and go aggro. <laughs> just the way our combo deck drew it up, attacking with tarmogoyfs. I mean, that is a six seven now, and our graveyard's getting full. This old rusting is either gonna hit lands or creatures. We don't play many spells. Can you beat a Tarmogoyf? All right, mill a creature, make a creature. Ooh, draw soul call tree. <laughs> okay, actually combo, combo might be back online now. <laughs> now we can try to win with Goyf and, and also combo. Yeah, let's get in with everything. A Boyra opponent. Drops to 14. Yeah, let's run out the Cami. One of the nice things about Soul Cauldron is Actually, like the Tarmogoyf getting Cami's ability is kind of ridiculous because the Goyf has so much power that it taps for a ridiculous amount of mana. So if our opponent kills a Cami, like whatever, we can just use Cauldron to uh, to make a Goyf into a Cami. Our graveyard's pretty good. So we have the Fairy. We have Fauna Shaman. Does a little looting. Gets in with Tillian's Messenger now to 16. And a tap land. Well, let's do a little milling. Okay, treasure is not the worst. Well, let's get in with our goif. I mean, if we keep attacking, we might force our opponent to tap down to play removal at some point. Well, they're gonna block. Oh, maybe that's legendary. They probably just have another one. Opponent, a boira. All right, yep, yep, yep. So gonna do some legend ruling. We get drained. I mean, I think this is a window to get down the soul cauldron, right? Or do we just play another goif? If we just play another goif, we're actually kind of threatening beatdowns. Yeah, let's get down the soul cauldron. I like that we're we're pressuring our opponent, but also, but also comboing. 
All right. Well, I mean, let's see if they have removal. If our opponent does not have removal, we don't actually win. We go infinite mana and untap our sleep curse fairy. <laughs> I mean, I guess so we go infinite mana and I mean, we got to we got to try it, right? There, I mean, why would we not? We can't awkwardly. We're in the rare situation where we have infinite mana, but we can't win this turn. I mean, this is all assuming our opponent doesn't have removal. So I think we do it, though. Like, we're going to want this exiled eventually anyway. So we can exile the Sleep Curse Fairy, put the counters on the Kami, see if everyone has a removal spell. Okay. Well, uh, now we make infinite mana for... This is the worst infinite mana I've ever seen. So we make infinite mana, and our infinite mana means we get to untap Sleep Curse Fairy, get rid of those, uh, those stun counters, and kick another Goyf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next turn we can win theoretically because we can use fauna shaman's ability to find <laughs> realm scorcher hellkite <laughs> all right yeah tap on tap tap on tap do a little do a little comboing uh, we're not going to combo forever, though. We're just going to combo enough to play our cards. We're going to run out the Goyf. I, there is an argument to holding on to the Goyf because Fauna Shaman does need a creature in hand. The argument, though, I would say for playing the Goyf is we're kind of just presenting beatdown lethal here. Well, here we go. Boom. Remove that slumber counter. Just how we drew it up. Infinite mana to remove slumber counters from Sleep Curse Fairy. Some, uh, some good deck building here. Alright, Tevin on that. I mean, I'm not complaining. We have infinite mana. Like, we're still doing very, very well. It's just funny that we went infinite mana and didn't actually have a way to win. Alright, remove a slumber counter or a stun counter. One, one more. One more to remove and then we can uh, ship back to our opponent here. We could just keep making mana and hope they scoop, but that seems, <laughs> seems BM. Alright, untap it. We finally got there. Remove the last counter and now it's untapped. And now we have a blocker. See, that's the power of infinite mana. Infinite mana, Sleepers Fairy actually becomes a, a better Delver of Secrets. All you gotta do is have infinite mana and it becomes a good creature. <laughs> that's it, that's all. So we do need to draw a creature. If we don't draw a creature, we're a little sad because we still can't actually win next turn. I mean, I guess we might be able to win by attacking, but opponent gets in, loots. Yup, 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 discards a counter. Yeah, counters that you can pay for don't seem very good against infinite mana. Well. We mill, come on, creature. Can we draw, okay. Sleep curse, we don't even care what creature, as long as it's a creature. So I think what we do here is exile the Fauna Shaman. And I think we're gonna put the counter on, yeah, let's put on Old Rutstein. So now Old Rutstein can be a Fauna Shaman. We still have infinite mana. So Old Rutstein, discard the Sleep curse Fairy, find the Realm Scorcher Hellkite. Hmm, we could go Triskaidecca file. Is that better? Realm Scorcher is just straight up lethal. Yeah, I think we go Realm Scorcher Hellkite. Now I guess we combo. So we got to make a bunch of mana. We got to make like a lot of mana, right? So we can bargain. So we're going to get four mana from that. You can activate the untap ability more than once. Okay, so opponent does go to try to kill it, but we have mana, so we can just untap it again. Well, now we got to make all the mana right now because we're going to lose our cami. All right, so how much mana do we need? Oh God, my brain. So, opponent's at 14. That means 28 damage, 28 mana worth of pinging with Realm Scorcher. Realm Scorcher costs six, so that's 34 mana, but it gives back four, 30 mana. But they could have that fairy counter. Oh, we're just gonna make a bunch of mana. I don't even wanna try to figure it out. We're just gonna keep tapping and untapping. <laughs> I mean, I think we're good. So if our opponent has a counter, it's probably the, the fairy counter, which is what, pay two plus the number of fairies you control, so we'd have to pay five. I wish this made more than one extra mana. That's the only thing I dislike about this combo is every time we go through this loop, we're generating one additional mana, which is infinite, but it also means infinite clicks. If we were generating like three or four extra mana, which is possible. Like if somehow we can grow the Kami's power more, it is possible. But uh, yeah, it just takes a, a lot of clicking. Although so far we haven't had any trouble running out of time. So maybe, maybe that's fine. All right, tab on tap, tab on tap. 
I mean, we also have the goifs. So I guess really, truly, we don't technically need to ping our opponent to death. We need enough mana that we can play Realm Scorcher and ping down our opponent's board. And then we can just attack with the goifs and win that way. All right, so 18. Run out the Realm Scorcher. We're going to bargain it. Sack the Blood Token. Sack the Dork. It really doesn't matter at this point. All right, there's a Spell Stutter. Yup. We will pay. So we have 11 mana, which this is fine. We could have kept going, but uh, this is good enough. So shoot down the creatures, attack with the Goyfs. Does this count as a Goyf win? <laughs> it required us making infinite mana <laughs> and being able to Realm Scorch a Hellkite a ridiculous number of times. But technically, technically it's it's Urborg Lurgoyf that's uh, beating down, right? <laughs> I think that counts. That's that's Goyf in 2023. Tarmogoyf, really good if you have infinite mana. I mean, that was another game where our opponent had a bunch of interaction and we still kind of crushed them. I'm starting to think that maybe somehow this deck might actually be kind of legit. We are trying to do some uh, infinite mana Agatha Soul Cauldron shenanigans in standard. And this hand's okay. This is like the control hand with all of our removal. Oh, fairy Dream Theft. Sure. Is this fairies again? Please not fairies again. I don't know why everyone is playing fairies. I guess people must really love fairies. Well, get on our fauna shaman. We're going to need more lands at some point. Life of Tishiro Yumazawa to pump the fairy. Huh? I wonder, is fairy dream theft actually playable? Are we just going to run out our cami here? They are black. Oh, actually, no. The saga just kills it, right? Yeah, we better not do that. Let's just, let's just pass. We can discard the sleep curse fairy and uh, go for the throat something. Hopefully not this dream theft. That seems a little, a little uh, underwhelming. A bone, it goes to combat, gets and hits us. Sure, 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 sure. We will take it down to 16. And ooh, oh, oh, that's actually pretty sweet. So the Saga gained life to turn on the Gumdrop Poisoner to kill our Fauna Shaman. Unfortunately, we can't Fauna Shaman at Soul Cauldron. Old Rustine seems fine for value. Can you get the Turtle to get something back? Yeah, let's just get Old Rustine. It worked out good last time. All right, Gumdrop Poisoner, sure. At least that's something that's, I guess, good enough to kill. So Fauna Shaman down. Let's play Old Rutstein. Oh, we mailed our soul cauldron. Okay. Well, if we find a turtle, we can get it back. That is a turtle power. <sighs> Liliana, sure. All right, his opponent's got a lot of interaction this game. Gets and hits us. We draw the Realm Scorcher. Well, that's fine. We can discard it and use its ability with soul cauldron. So it's looking kind of grim though. Let's play our Vana Shaman. Opponent's got a clock and a bunch of removal and a Liliana, which is gonna attack our hand and our board. I wonder if this Saga is actually good now. It turned on the Gumdrop Poisoner and you can bargain off it because it's an enchantment. Maybe it's actually good. All right, opponent smacks us down to 12. Sure, Liliana ticks up. We'll discard the Realm Scorch Hellkite. Opponent discards a land and she Shieldred. Well, we do have another go for the throw. I guess this also means we get to get rid of the Liliana. Our opponent's attack was kind of aggressive. Now we get to kill the Liliana. We're still at 12, so are we actually in this game again? Play the Kami. Like, so we need to find, we need to find the Cauldron. If we find the Cauldron, we can probably win. We got the Sleep Curse Fairy in the graveyard. It actually seems possible that if we find Cauldron, we go off. I guess we don't win in one turn, right? Because we don't have a way to, ooh. Okay, Gumdrop Poisoner, Sacks of Food. Just kill the, mm, all right, I was hoping they killed the Fauna Shaman, but Reless, uh, Restless Cottage, eh? How are we trying to do this? So I think this, uh, yeah, let's discard. Uh, Goyf is big. I mean, this keeps us alive for a bit, right? Fills the graveyard. Mill is another soul cauldron. So I think what we need to set up is Fauna Shaman to get the turtle to get back the soul cauldron. Oh no. Oh no. Is this just Beseech for Shieldred? I think Beseech the Mirror might actually just be busted. This card, I was thinking it was really. Oh. Yes, yes, okay, that's that's actually fine. It's the end, but it's hitting our Goyfs. Wow, maybe Goyf is good. Goyf is apparently good enough to make our opponent target it with. 
with the N instead of a combo piece. All right, go for the throat something. We can also start leaving up these creature lands to play a little defense, cha-cha-cha. We need a creature. We need a creature. Okay, that is that is a creature. So we can discard the Fauna Shaman. Actually, oh, we can't do it all this turn anyway. Because it's three, so we discard Fauna Shaman and get a turtle, but it's three to get back the Soul Cauldron. So I guess we just gotta wait and try to do it next turn? Let's just pass. We can just do it all at instant speed, so there's no point in like putting the cauldron in hand and getting it thought seized or something. So, all right, end of turn, discard the Fauna Shaman. Get our old friend, Colossal Sky Turtle. Colossal Sky Turtle channels to get back our Soul Cauldron. Well, let's play Soul Cauldron. Oh, it's down to one card. Ooh, Death Bloom Ritualist. Am I just, yeah, Death Bloom's gonna let our Fauna Shaman tap for eight mana. So I think we can't win right now. It's gonna take a couple of turns. But what we can do is we can pass, turn Fauna Shaman into the Ritualist, and then use the mana to fire up the creature lands to block and leave up the, the go for the throw. I think that's the game plan. We need two turns. We need one turn to exile the Ritualist, another turn for the untapping, and then we need to draw a creature for Fauna Shaman. Oh no, take Numa. Okay, is this Shieldred again? Liliana, I guess Liliana also makes sense. Although we can kind of play around the Liliana, right? All right, Liliana, sure. So we can exile Deathbloom Ritualist. Fauna Shaman can now tap for eight mana. I guess we should wait until they activate Liliana. I assume they're ticking down. That's the only thing that makes sense. And then we can fire up a... All right, opponent takes down. So we can fire up a creature land to block. So make black, fire up your uh, Restless Cottage. Sack that to Liliana. Actually tap it for mana first, because we actually need this mana. Sack it to Liliana to keep our Fauna Shaman, which is actually a Death Moon Merchless. Go for the throw, the Poisoner. I guess we might as well channel too. Well, this is it. Opponent has one card in hand, and this gets the creature back to our hand, and opponent scoops it up. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, wow, how do we win that one? We are going infinite in new standard with some, uh, A, get the soul cauldron, and yeah, no soul cauldron, but uh, otherwise this hand's kind of sweet. Rixus A. Well, run out the Fauna Shaman. I will say, I think Fauna Shaman is the truth in this deck. I've seen a couple of other people post a uh, deck list for this infinite combo of trying to like go off with Aegis' Soul Cauldron. Having had Fauna Shaman, Fauna Shaman, I think for me has been like the card that makes this kind of possible. And let's, uh, can't wake up. Wake me up inside. Blah, blah, blah. Mill some guards. Fairy Mastermind, so many Fairy Masterminds. I swear that's like the most popular card today. It's in Fairies, it's in the Control decks, it's in the Tempo decks. I guess it's just a really good card. When it gets in, hits us. What are we doing with this Fauna Shaman? Since we have the Turtle in hand, our best plan for finding a Soul Cauldron might just be to, to just mill. Mill as much as possible and then try to turtle it back. Could take Shigiki. We could also use Lands. Could take another Turtle, just because Turtles are sweet. <laughs> I mean, Turtle could be any card in our graveyard, which is pretty good. Well, let's play Take Numa. I mean, I guess we run out of... You well, know, we only have one green source. That's kind of awkward. We run out the Cruel Somnophage, but I don't know if it's worth it. Like, it's a 4-4, four, four, which is fine, but I don't think it's going to actually win by beating down here. Yeah, let's just play Cami. That means no Fauna Shaman this turn, but I think this is the highest upside play for the future. Like, so we don't get a Fauna Shaman, but... But, 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 but... Cammy is our easiest way to go infinite if we find a soul cauldron, and we got the fairy in the graveyard, so if we happen to just shield it, okay. Hmm. Uh, annoying. Well, turtle power. Let's uh, bounce that shield rid. Come on, soul cauldron. We really need the soul cauldron. More camis. Well, yeah, let's discard a cami. <sighs> Goif? Shigiki? Let's go Shigiki. Shigiki's slow, but like our, so our main game plan is like, 
We need to mill the soul calder in so we can get it back with turtle. And we need to do this before we die to the shoulder that we know about. Oh, oh, that is real bad for us. That is real bad. Well, okay, backup plan. Old stick fingers. Mill a couple creatures. I mean, our graveyard is so full. This is a 1111 now, which means this Sobnophage should also be an 1111 now. Maybe we can. Okay, Fairy Mastermind. If our opponent doesn't have removal, maybe we can just win by beating down. Grixis, though. Yeah, Shieldred's Edict. Sure. Mm. Yeah, we might have met our match. Brotherhood and plus Shieldred, plus Shieldred's Edict. That's a lot. All right. We're in desperation mode now. Bounce the Shieldred again. Draw a Goyf. Play a Sobnophage. It's kind of disappointing that we're playing two mana 14 14s and they just aren't good enough. <laughs> They're so big, but so useless, opponent. Another Shieldred. I mean, we can play the biggest Goyf ever, but then we just die. Triskaidekaphile, we get drained. GG Shieldred. Dirty, dirty, dirty Shieldreds. Well, no Soul Cauldron, but this hand has everything else we could want. Double Cami, Sleep Curse Fairy. Ooh, discard, eh? Well, yes, we would like to put the Sleep Curse Fairy in our graveyard. Thank you very much. So we just need this old cauldron, basically. Ooh, there's a turtle. The turtle's also good. That means getting a soul cauldron in the graveyard will also potentially work. Abundant. Resolute reinforcements. All right, so this has to be some sort of bargain deck? What? When it dies, put its counters on target creature you control. Okay. I mean, I guess we just... Cammy, Cammy Whammy, pass the turn. Thankfully, we're not taking too much damage. Wow, opponent just passes. Oh, we just gotta find the Soul Cauldron. We're so close. We are so close. Let's discard a Sleep Cursed Fairy. I think we're back on the Fill the Graveyard plan. Fill the Graveyard, find the Soul Cauldron. Turtle it back. Yeah, let's grab Shigiki. Play Shigiki. If our opponent's just planning on sacking their enchantment, we're, oh. Okay, that is, that is fine. That is a painful turn. Our opponent must be really desperate for lands. Three mana sack your enchantment to scry two does not feel, does not feel good. All right, opponent. Wow, still didn't hit a land. Our opponent is having some rough running here. Go, go, Shikiki. Pick it up. Can we mill a cauldron, please? No. Well, okay, grab a land. Yeah, are we playing the channel land? Probably. Yeah, I think being able to activate, being able to activate a Fauna Shaman here is worth legend ruling ourselves. Run out the Shigigi, pass the turn. All right, more resolute reinforcements. Thankfully our mighty one three is <laughs> enough to hold down our opponent's <laughs> battlefield. <laughs> opponent lords oh all right that's actually that's actually super annoying just because it eats our graveyard not really worried about dying to the rats but this does snipe our sleep curse fairy so this puts us on a clock puts us on a clock for actually finding soul cauldron or else they're gonna eat our combo pieces and that's gonna make it hard well discard old stick fingers hmm yeah, I guess if we take another Sky Turtle, we can... All right, we draw Triska Decafile. If we draw another... uh, We can use Sky Turtle to get back something that our opponent's about to eat with Lord Skitter. Oh, okay, there's the Soul Cauldron. That is actually exactly what we needed. Exactly. The only problem is... Oh, this Lord Skitter. We should be okay, though, right? We can use Fauna Shaman to get another Fairy. We don't have the mana for that, though. Huh. Yeah, maybe we just kill the... Kill the Lord Skitter. I guess that's the easiest solution. Kill the Skitter. This means we're going to need two turns. We can actually channel Turtle. We can go for it this turn. Because we can channel Turtle, play the Soul Cauldron. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two. Yeah, we can actually go for it this turn. So. Yeah, let's take the Death Bloom Ritualist. We can channel the Turtle. Agatha Soul Cauldron. We also have the Shigiki in hand, so we can get back our entire graveyard if this works. Uh, Sleep Cursed Fairy. All right, infinite mana achieved. I think this is a win, right? Because we can... We can channel Triskaidekaphile. 
I mean, we can just, we can do everything here. Well, <laughs> we were aided a little bit this game by our opponent not really drawing lands, but uh, but yes, let's fawn a shaman. We'll show our opponent the Realm Scorcher Hellkite. Grab the Realm Scorcher Hellkite. Yeah, we're winning in every, that's the joy of this deck is we go infinite in so many ways. It, at this point, it really doesn't matter. We only had one game, one game where we went infinite and it <laughs> didn't immediately win. So tap and untap, tap and untap. Eventually we make all the mana. We play the Realm Scorcher Hellkite, we burn you out, and uh, I gotta say, this combo seems way more realistic than I expected. <laughs> I know it's early access day, so we'll see if it carries over into real standard, but uh, yeah, opponent scoops it up, and the deck's actually kind of-ish good, sort of, easy to pull off, and Soul Cauldron might actually be busted, but, you know, I don't know, I guess we'll talk about that in the wrap-up. Be right back. So what did we learn this week about Infinite Agatha Soul Cauldron in Wilds of Eldraine Standard? And overall, the deck worked a lot better than I expected. So I should say, we were recording this on Early Access Day. I don't really put a lot of weight in the records on Early Access Day because people are like trying out a bunch of new things, testing out the new cards. But I was thinking this would be one of those decks where we like lost a ton and maybe comboed off once or twice. But in the end, we played nine matches with the deck and won five of them. And I think we won every single one by comboing off. So the combo was actually pretty easy to achieve. Like we pulled it off more than 50% of the time, which is kind of ridiculous when you consider we need three pieces and only get a bunch of redundancy. But I think the deck might actually be a lot better than people think. I was thinking this was like full on against odds combo. No chance this could ever actually work, but it actually seemed like it's pretty practical to pull off this combo. Plus we got a reasonable backup plan of just like putting big Tarmogoyf creatures on the back battlefield. We didn't really win much by beating down with Tarmogoyfs and Old Stick Fingers, but they were good blockers to like buy us a little time to get things set up. And I gotta say, the key card to this deck is really Fauna Shaman. That is a card that is by far impressed me most. That's a card that actually made it super easy to assemble our combo. Thanks to Fauna Shaman's tutoring power and ability to get like Sleep Curse Fairy in the graveyard and find a Kami, it was actually very, very easy to set up. And it even can kind of find the Soul Cauldron by getting Colossal Sky Turtle to get back one that's milled. So I think Fauna Shaman is really the secret sauce that makes the combo way more consistent than I expected. And I think we won almost every time we comboed off. We did have one game where we made infinite mana and just like untapped our sleep curse fairy and we ended up winning the next turn. But usually if we make infinite mana, we do win the game on the spot. So I gotta say the deck's super sweet. It's super unique. It does really cool things and you do them way more often than I would have expected. Cause like I said, I thought this was gonna be a like 10% eh, of the time we do something spectacular. 90% of the time we get absolutely crushed, but really we did this spectacular thing more than half the time, which is pretty impressive for it to get the odds deck. So anyway, that is infinite Agatha Soul Cauldron. That's how you can go infinite in standard in every way possible. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you soon.